I'm Brittany, this is Shelian, and welcome to Gay Watch, where we watch gay things. Today, we continue reading through volume one of Save System. We were on page, hello, we were on page 203, right at the scene break, and we read about 50 pages. Today, I'm going to try to stretch that just a little bit, because I think just from skimming and trying to spot scene breaks, obviously not reading anything, scene breaks or chapter breaks or whatever, I think getting around somewhere in like two... 265 or something like that or the 260s there's a chapter break so if we stretch it just a little bit if we can pack in just a little bit more we'll get to a good like chapter break actually um let's see we read for two hours usually come about that much so now what else am i forgetting i don't think i'm really forgetting much actually i think we can just kind of hop in we can just kind of get going especially if we're going to try to cram in a few extra pages today um i only have one mug of tea sitting here with me at the moment so i might have to take a little bit of a break um a bit over halfway through to just like grab something else but i will keep that as short as possible so that we can get in all the pages we possibly can about this absolutely ridiculous interesting uh, story that's the only way i can really characterize it right now because i'm in the middle of it let us continue we were in the middle of a uh, chapter four which is called conference and, <laughs> of course, it starts with the, the gorge that sounds French to me. <clears throat> Jouer de gorge? Jouer de gorge. Sure? Sure. <clears throat> it spanned seven mountain peaks and overflowed with verdant greenery. Scattered every which where within it were bright springs and dark rivers, waterfalls and wondrous stones, deep valleys and soaring peaks. As the name Hopeless Land implied, some of its terrain represented the brink of despair. Yet in the next moment, as if confirming that every cloud had a silver lining, you would spot paths winding through the peaks, indelible and unerasable. In Shen, in Shen Ching Cho's eyes, oh, we're off to a great start. Such a reminder was vital for both adventurers and homebodies. The new talent participating in the conference followed the agreed upon arrangements. I just realized I'm wearing headphones for no reason and that's why my voice sounds weird. I hopped on from a Merlin stream <clears throat> a couple minutes ago. And then I was listening to Halsey while I was getting ready for this stream. You know, anyway followed the agreed upon arrangements and stood in well-ordered rows surrounding a gigantic natural stone platform before the gorge. Disciples from the four great cultivation sects made up the main share of participants. Seachung Mountain was in the lead, followed closely by Jiahua Monastery, Tianyi Temple, and Huanhua Palace. Of the four sects, Seng Ch Seng Chung I just did all of that so well. Seachung Mountain was the most comprehensive. The twelve peaks each had their own strengths and a variety of fields. Meanwhile, the monastery and temple sects were naturally those who fostered Buddhist monks and Taoist priests, respectively. Huanhua Palace was more complicated. Their sect followed the teachings of a number of different schools, had an aptitude for the Taoist art of concealment, and interacted the most with the secular world. The level of their techniques was unclear, but on one point there was no doubt. They were absolutely the wealthiest of the sects, they contributed the most funds to every conference. Other than these four, numerous small and mid-sized sects were also partic participating. Therefore, the final number of those who had signed up and gathered at Jouedi Gorge was well over 1,000. What had been a cold and silent gorge entrance suddenly burst to life with more than 1,000 people. Animals that had never seen people before were all frightened away. It was unusually lively in all meanings of the word. A high dais had been constructed at the entrance to the gorge, and from there, all the non-participating cultivators would observe the battles. Various colored flags representing each of the sects fluttered and swayed upon it. Sects for the sect leaders were at seats for the sect leaders were at the highest level. Sing Chong Mountain's delegation, led by Yue Qingyuan, took their place on the dais. Shen Ching Cho sat in the back next to an elderly man of great poise and a head of white hair. This man had greeted their group earlier and nodded to him again now. Immortal Master Shen, he said. Huanhua's palace's, Huanhua palace's old palace master was also the master of Lo Binga's birth mother. 
Shen Ching Cho returned the greeting in the mode of someone meeting the emperor's relative. Not long after, a member of Huanghua Hua Palace walked onto the stone platform. After all, they'd contributed the most money, so no one could argue with their choice of host. Below the platform, the over 1,000 competitors gradually quieted, focusing their attention on listening to the host describe the proceedings. The host's martial foundations were deep, his breaths plentiful and long-lasting. Every last person at the mouth of the gorge, including those on the soaring dais, could clearly hear his voice in full. The conference will last for seven days. Once everyone enters the gorge, we will erect a giant barrier and cover the entirety of Jouet de Gorge. For those seven days, the participants who enter Jouet de Gorge will be isolated from the outside world and will remain ignorant to what happens there. The observers will follow the situation with within via the spirit eagles let loose above the valley over a hundred varieties of demonic creatures of demonic creature have been loosed within the valley this is sounding familiar the total number nears five thousand every time you take down a creature you will receive a prayer bead from its body the creatures are of different difficulty levels and the spiritual chi within the prayer beads will likewise vastly differ is everyone wearing a gold cord around their wrists the people beneath the platform raised their wrists together, revealing a sea of gold cords. It was quite a magnificent sight. The host continued, When you obtain a bead, thread it into the cord. Your scores will automatically be displayed on the ranking charts outside. The ranking charts were displayed opposite the dais. Although there were eight charts in total, the crowd's attention would be squared on the names of the top 100 scores on the first gold inscribed tablet at the top. And at times... They would be watching only the top ten. This embodied the principle of no first place among scholars, no second place among martial artists. That comes with a footnote that says scholars must uphold modesty and so can't claim first place while martial artists are all about competition and so only first place matters to them. Huh. Finally, Hua Huan Palace... Finally, the Hua Hua Palace host delivered a severe warning. Sect disciples are forbidden from fighting over and stealing each other's beads. The moment anyone is found to be fighting or using underhanded methods to steal beads, their right to participate will be revoked, and they will be banned from the conference for three sessions. Three sessions meant twelve years. This group of new talent was like a mix of carp and dragons. Many were young and inexperienced, but quite a few were slippery old bastards, scoundrels who'd scurried about for years and years. If duels weren't forbidden, the organizers had reason to fear that the entire conference would devolve into incomparable chaos, and lives might well be lost. Therefore, this rule was exceptionally necessary. Shen Ching Cho was bored to the point that his bones itched. Though he seemed to be staring intently at the scene beneath him, his mind had long since wandered off. Suddenly, from the side, several female members of a certain sect leader's entourage whispered among themselves. Which sect is that disciple from? He's incredibly handsome. Those white robes really suit him, maybe even better than they do Gong Yi Shishang. But Gong Yi Shishang isn't just extraordinarily handsome, he also possesses incredible spiritual sp strength. How can you compare them? You just can't stand when anyone criticizes Gong Yi Shishang, can you? Sure enough, you defended him right away. Admit it. Admit what? Stupid girl, what did you just say? I dare you to say it again. A burst of mortified, frustrated anger was followed by giggling play fighting. As soon as he'd heard them, Shen Ching Cho knew who they were knew who they were eyeing. The figure in the crowd dressed all in white, the refined, outstanding Lo Bing -a. In truth, they weren't the only ones secretly watching and discussing him. Even a number of the girls in the crowd of participants below the stone platform were glancing stealthily at Lo Bing -a, their jade-like cheeks dusted with blushing red. Oh, a sentence! I'm sorry, their jade-like cheeks dusted with blushing red. Ugh, screw her. There was already, and screw the translators as well. Because that's ridiculous. The girls kept their voices very low, but given the quality of cultivators present, their five senses all incredibly sharp, of course they were overheard. These girls were too young to be careful, and they let others hear their private conversations. 
Fortunately, their seniors were all very considerate and let their sect leader, who was already holding a hand to his forehead and feigning sleep, keep his dignity. Everyone pretended that they hadn't unintentionally eavesdropped, their gazes straight and unflinching. In an effort to break the awkward pall, someone coughed twice. Why don't we do as we have before and make our predictions about which of these new talents will stand out the most, he said with a smile. Shen Ching Cho's spirits rose. The words, make our predictions, weren't actually referring to divining fortunes, but instead to gambling. To be clear, it was about betting on the talent you had your eye on. Cultivators needed entertainment, too, after all. Also, the stakes used in these bets weren't tacky monetary items like gold and silver, but artifacts, spirit stones, or even the names of disciples who would be sent to study under other sects. They also wouldn't bet anything of vital importance, but it was still one of the Immortal Alliance Conference's traditional entertainment activities. Anyone as dignified as a first-class sect leader, like Yue Qingwan, had to be conscious of their status and wouldn't, and wouldn't indulge in things like this, but naturally many others were willing to join the fun. A short moment later, the dais was roaring with enthusiasm, dozens of bets being laid. Quite a few bet on their own disciples. For example, Chi Ha Chi Ching Hmm Chi Ching Chi Hu bet on Lu Mingyan's victory. Shen Ching Cho didn't even need to think. The straight away he bet, and straight away he bet five thousand spirit stones on Lo Binga. Such a daring move caused quite a ripple. Even Yue Ching Yuan paused in his polite exchange of greetings with the abbot from Jiao Hua Monastery. His gaze shifting toward Shen Ching Cho. Shen Ching Cho saw the way Yue Ching Yuan seemed about to speak, but didn't. Cheng Wen Chi Xiang, this is just a bit of fun, he said, to encourage Binga a little. Just for fun, Lu Chinga sneered. If you shattered the entirety of Qingjing Peak, would you even find a, a thousand? <clears throat> would you even find a thousand spirit stones in the rubble? Shen Jing Cho clammed up. Indeed, he wouldn't. When placing a bet here, you only needed to write it down. The accounts were settled afterward, and you didn't need proof of funds. Because everyone here had name and reputation, there was no fear that debts would be blown off. Shen Ching Cho knew that betting on Lo Bingo was a sure win, and so he had raised the stakes. After all, no one else knew exactly how many assets he possessed. Yue Ching Yuan was probably afraid of the sect being embarrassing before outsiders, and he rushed to smooth things over. All right, lower your voices. Of course there would. Jing Men Shang, you'll be his guarantor? Chi Ching Chi, hey! Butted in, getting right to the point. I will, said Yue Ching Yuan. If you lose, who pays? Lu Chinga asked. Me, said Yue Ching Yuan. If I win, who keeps the payout? Asked Chen Ching Cho. You, said Yue Ching Yuan. An agreement was reached, and everyone other than Lu Chinga rejoiced. Chen Ching Cho happily went to make his bet. The gathered cultivators quietly wondered why they'd never heard of Lo Binga. You couldn't really blame them. The current Lobinga's modus operandi was low-key and modest, and he was unwilling to claim credit. Every time he did a good deed or completed a task, he quietly took his leave. This prevented his reputation from growing, so his skills and talents had never shown. Those unaware of the situation assumed Shen Ching Cho was doing exactly as he'd claimed, and just making a show of good faith to encourage his disciple. Below the dais, after the participants took their oath together, they formally entered the venue. There were many of them, so twelve different entrances had been erected, through which the participants would enter in assorted groups of mixed sex. The participants, shaking with nerves, stepped into Jouet de Gorge and began their expeditions. On the dais, the members of the older generations, who'd long since achieved success and made their reputations, had finished their round of betting. They sat with unruffled composure, some of them even exchanging pointers, chatting, or chewing on melon seeds. Within the venue flew more than a hundred spirit eagles controlled by experts. The silver rings around their talons were inlaid with special crystals. As they soared, a panoramic view of the people and scenery below was projected onto the dais's numerous crystal mirrors, the effect similar to that of surveillance equipment. Someone smiled from ear to ear, as expected, Gong Yixiao is in first place right after entering. 
On the gold inscribed tablet, the first ten names all shone with bright light. At this time, Gong Yi Xiao had already reached the first place position. Right after his name was the number twelve. That is to say, a mere hour in, he'd already eliminated twelve demonic creatures and obtained twelve prayer beads. Even Lu Ming Yan, close behind in second, had only obtained six prayer beads. A large gap had already appeared. A youth dressed in white was reflected on a crystal mirror, his figure elegant and unrestrained, like drifting clouds and flowing water, yet his actions were quick as lightning. In an instant, he shredded a shrilly screaming vengeful ghost into scattered smoke. An unceasing stream of excessive praise rose in response, and Shen Ching Cho smiled without speaking. This Gong Yi Xiao, although he looked favored and blessed, overflowing with incredible presence. Actually, eh, he was at best only half a dollar better than his fellow cannon fodder. He was the typical character trope who was handsome, of good lineage and surpassing talent, loved by girls, full of metal, and accomplished in his youth. But unfortunately, there was also the protagonist, so he was doomed to serve as the lead's cannon fodder foil. Though most bets for top ranker had been placed on Gong Yi Xiao, sorry to say, he wouldn't be first for long before Lo Bing -a kicked him off the spot. Lo Bing -a's name was currently in the middle of the pack. The number after it was a mere one. Yet Shen Ching Cho wasn't worried at all. He knew that once tonight arrived and once the curtains lifted on that breathtaking climactic event, Lo Bing -a's name would soar unstoppably up the charts. The first day of the Immortal Alliance Conference approached midnight. A round golden moon hung high in the sky, and the dais gleamed bright beneath the lamplight. Among the many crystal mirrors, Shen Ching Cho finally found one displaying Lo Bing -a. Currently, he was slowly moving through the forest, spotlessly clean and without a trace of exhaustion. His eyes were like stars, and it seemed as if they could see right through the crystal mirror. However, he wasn't alone. Most of the participants moved by themselves. If people teamed up to fight the monsters, how would they divvy up the beads? At most, they might cooperate with those they were familiar with, forming teams of two or three Shishiang and Shidi. There were also <clears throat> some incredible female cultivators, but on the whole, these girls' strength and mental fortitude was lacking, and they often required help. Their teams were mainly composed of Shimei and Shiji, who got along well, and they spent their time playing around instead of actually working. Basically, they looked quite hopeless. Yet following after Lo Bingo were seven or eight other individuals, and all of them were either delicate girls or young disciples. This group drew a great deal of attention. Some of the audience even stopped watching Gong Yi Xiao's heroic exploits, switching over to size up this bloated team and finding it too strange to look away. In the group, the one walking closest to Lo Bingo was a Huan Hua disciple, in light yellow robes, holding a night pearl to light the way. The girl was graceful and elegant, but she walked with a slight limp, like she had sprained her ankle. It was probably an injury she had sustained while fighting monsters. Lo Shishong, I truly apologize, she said. You saved us, and now we're troubling you. If you weren't protecting us, you would be so far ahead already. We are a burden. We are all cultivators. It's our obligation to look after each other, Lo Binga said, eminently proper. Shen Ching Cho had come to know Lo Binga's early stage white lotus mindset like the back of his hand, and he didn't find this strange. His student was fighting monsters while also looking after this crowd of weaker fighters, women and young disciples. Hence, he hadn't shot up in the rankings. Otherwise, with his ability, he would have already effortlessly defeated Gong Yi Xiao. Even Ming Fan ranked higher than Lo Binga right now, but it didn't matter. Lo Binga would have a second wind. My disciple is the most awesome in the world. If he weren't so good, so kind, and so easy to take advantage of, none of you could even dream of defeating him. Shun Ching Cho never thought to reflect on what this agitated attitude of his meant. Yue Ching Yuan smiled. Ching Cho, that little disciple of yours, has great moral character. Shun Ching Cho smiled behind his open fan, quietly accepting the compliment. Ching who Chi Ching Chi Humphed. Exactly. It's impossible to tell that he was the one who taught the boy. Other observers other observers said a few additional words of praise. However, they weren't necessarily sincere. What use was good moral character? 
the Immortal Alliance Conference valued power. In their eyes, Lopinga's actions seemed rather childish. But when Huanhua Palace's old palace master, sitting by Shen Qingcho's side, saw Lo Binga's face through the crystal mirror, he let out a barely audible, huh? and almost stood up. Shen Qingcho didn't glance over, but he understood well enough. Lo Binga was beautiful, and he looked quite like his birth mother. The old palace master had seen this face and, thinking the junior disciple's similar appearance only coincidental, had become nostalgic about his own favorite. He could scarcely have imagined that Lo Binga was the child of precisely that beloved lost pupil. On the other side, in Jue de Gorge, Lo Binga was calmly considering what to do with this crowd of vulnerable disciples. This also sounds familiar. The lead coming into the protection of a small rabble of people. That they then have to, like, protect and keep safe as they get out of whatever situation. Uh-huh. Delightfully familiar, that. I'm looking at the wrong page. From a moral standpoint, he couldn't just abandon them. They were from Huanhua Palace and had barely started training. But he also didn't want to miss the chance to shine in the Immortal Alliance Conference and win honor for Shizun. As Lo Binga was mulling over how to extricate himself from this situation, Shen Ching Cho thought he was rolling around with maidens and making sparks, making sparks fly. There was the first maiden to sleep with Lo Binga, Qin Wan Yue, the graceful and subdued little Shime. The biggest impression this maiden had left on Shen Ching Cho was her role in helping Lo Binga lose his virginity. Later, her role was to be a victim in the constant harem intrigue. Only someone as special as airplanes shooting toward the sky could manage to occasionally write a stallion novel's harem more in the flavor of the legend of Zhen Huan. That comes with a footnote. English name, Empress in the Palace, a... 2011 television series centered on harem scheming and infighting. I'd rather read 10,000 words describing how ghost head spiders mate than read about Sha Hua Ling tearing into Qin Wan Yue. Thank you. Watching this parade of people trailing close behind Lo Bing Er, treating him like their personal savior, Shen Qing Cho grew unhappy. Some of these disciples honestly hadn't acclimated, and so couldn't yet demonstrate their skills. They would be fine after a little more time to adjust. But some were truly ignorant and incompetent, yet they refused to back out of the competition. They wanted to ride at Lo Binga's coattails so they could fumble together some beads and rise in the ranking. If this were the black-hearted Lo Binga, he'd have slaughtered them all in seconds without even blinking. People sure do take advantage of kindness, huh? That was a thought. They pressed forward for a while, and every low-level monster that leapt from the darkness to attack them was eliminated with pretty much only flicks of Lobinga's fingers. His sword never left its sheath, yet he still couldn't pick up the pace. Why? A female disciple from Huanhua Palace leaned on Chin Wan Yue and began to hiccup and cry. Gigi, my feet hurt so much. In front, Lobinga stopped, but he didn't turn around. He lowered his head and rubbed his temples. Nervous, Chin Wan Yue lowered her head and spoke quietly to the girl. Wen Rong, endure it for a bit longer, all right? We have to walk a little faster. But my feet really hurt. I can't walk anymore, Wen Rong Mei Mei whined. We've been walking all day and there's nowhere to take a bath. I'm so uncomfortable. A number of untrained disciples in the group agreed, one after the other. If Shen Jing Cho had been the one in charge, he would have long since revoked their right to participate and kicked them out of Zhui Di Gorge. If your feet are so delicate, don't sign up for the Immortal Alliance Conference. And if you do, then whatever, but why drag others down? Look at Lu Ming Yun. The difference between you is vast. No wonder she's the number one female protagonist. More thoughts. But there was nothing he could do about Qin Wenrong. After all, the beautiful sisters Qin Wan Wei and Qin Wan Rong were members of Lo Binga's harem. Therefore, according to universal convention, no matter how dedicatedly they dug their own graves, they wouldn't die. Shen Qingzhou's heart filled with a strange annoyance. Lo Binga, you... 
In the future, when you're gathering your harem, can you put more thought into quality? Don't welcome just any decent-looking girl into your arms. The inconsistency in your harem standards make this master's heart hurt for you. Chin Wanyue sent another look at Lo Binga's back. Little sister, she said quietly, we've already made a lot of trouble for Lo Shishan. Lo Shishan. She still wanted to rely on Lo Binga and try to make a name for herself in the Immortal Alliance Conference and earn some reputation. If her sister foolishly annoyed Lo Binga, it would go badly for her. Lo Shishang is such a good person. He won't mind, Chin Wenrong said innocently. Isn't that right, Lo Shishang? Lo Binga finally turned, a faint smile on his face, peerlessly handsome, utterly faultless, and did not speak. But for some reason, Chin Wenwe inwardly shivered in fear. However, Chin Wenrong had cotton for brains and took his smile as acquiescence. Singing a carefree tune, she swept over to a nearby creek like a gust of wind. It's coming, Shen Qingqiu's gaze tensed. Lo Binga started. Given what she'd just said, he thought he was going to bathe. Fortunately, this little girl wasn't that eccentric, and she only took off her shoes and socks to dip her feet into the creek. Those were the river's upper reaches. What if someone downstream wanted to drink? Shen Qingqiu mentally lit a candle for any such unlucky disciples. A number of the other disciples soon followed Chin Wenrong's example, and just like that, the little crowd started to laugh and play. Lo Binga was completely helpless as he watched. It would have been awkward to approach them, so he could only call from far away. Waiting in the water at night isn't safe. It's best if we finish and leave right away. Shen Ching Cho felt this was a bit odd. In the original novel, surely Lo Binga hadn't stood so far away. He didn't think he had remembered wrong. At this time, Lo Binga, out of worry, or out of great master, airplane shooting towards the sky, selfish desire to write fan service, went to the creek with the others. Then he enjoyed the alluring show of all the women slowly rolling down their stockings. Textbook foot fetish material. Gee, I wonder why. Lo Binga pleaded with the disciples, but a few had even crossed to the other side of the creek, chatting and laughing. It's all right, Lo Shishang, you come too. Even the sect leaders watching through the crystal mirrors were speechless. Chen Qingqiu had no expression on his face. Lo Binga, you still won't go? If you don't, you'll miss the plot. How's the thought? Chin Wanyue knew her little sister was being rather inappropriate, and she cautiously apologized to Lo Binga. Lo Shishang, I'm so sorry, she said. This is the first time Shi Mei and the others are participating in the Immortal Alliance Conference. Truly lovable and pitiful, she bit her lip like she was making an excruciating decision. If Lo Shishang feels burdened, leave us and go. It's all right. These words, together with that expression on the verge of tears, were wildly insincere. But after hearing her plea, any man with a bare minimum of virtue would find himself unable to do as she suggested. Before Lo Binga could reply, an ear-piercing scream came from the creek. His face suddenly changed, and she shoved past Chin Wanyue, whose beautiful face had lost all color as he dashed toward the creek's bank. The audience watching from the crystal mirrors stood in terror. What's going on? Lo Binga said in a forceful voice, his sword before him. Five or six disciples had been washing their feet and playing in the creek. Now two of them had disappeared, and one of the missing was Chin Wen Rong. You see? More thoughts. Told you that you should have gone earlier. Wonderful. A perfectly good wife is now gone. Just like that. Chen Ching Cho thought, frustrated and disappointed. Now you can't complete the Chin Sisters... The Chin... Chin? 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 Hmm? Sister's bouquet for that grand threesome scene in the future. Now what? Moreover, despite everything, he'd never thought that a member of the protagonist's harem could actually get herself killed. I don't know what happened, a disciple screamed. The water suddenly turned black and Shi Jie and the other were swept under by something. Lo Binga rapidly dragged the stupefied disciples still in the creek up onto the bank. But just as he reached out to grab the last person, they fell over like they had lost their footing. Everyone stared as the water closed over the disciples' head and they disappeared with their eyes wide open. At the same time, a black smog billowed through the creek. Shen Ching Cho peered through the crystal mirror. The smog was actually countless black strands, smooth and silky like a woman's dark hair. No, thank you. 
for between the strands seeped scarlet blood diluted by creek water. They were thicker and more disgusting than Sadako's hair. I know that reference. But just for those who don't, that has a footnote. And it says, Sadako is a ghostly character who appeared in the Japanese horror movie Rungu, famous for her long bedraggled black hair, which obscured her face. I grew up on the English version of, on the American version of The Ring. I know Sadako and Samara. And that's not an image I ever want in my head. Why would you describe this, MXTX? That's not fun for me. Someone on the dais cried out in shock. Nuyuan Chan in Jueti Gorge, Lo Binga had quickly identified the monster in the creek as well. He sent sword glares in the water as he cried, Get far away from the water! It's the demon realms, Nuyuan Chan! For a while... The billows and billows of the hair-like demonic creature's body swirled within the water. Suddenly, like they were burping after a full meal, the black strands spat out a few objects with a stream of bubbles, three bodies that had been sucked clean of flesh and blood, leaving only drenched corpses of skin and bone. The pores on the dead bodies were abnormally large. That was because many strands of hair were still attached to their skin. Oh, Thrust into their, ooh, oh, thrust into their, oh, pores, oh, hungrily sucking out the body's remaining flesh, blood, and spiritual essence. Oh, oh, leaving no poor, oh, leaving no poor uninvaded, diving into any opening it could find. This was one of the new Yuan Chan's most terrifying characteristics. One of, one of, not the, one of. He's got something else that rivals this? You're not going to like tell me or anything, are you? Because I didn't, that was... too effective that was too effective a creative decision mxdx that was too no that was too no mm -mm. Whew. that was too well too well done oh jesus i'm gonna have to work to get that image out of my head and i watch horror movies Whew. this scene scared the disciples by the creek witless uh yeah. Wails and screams filled the forest as they threw themselves behind Lo Binga to hide. At the sight of the horrible state of her sister's body, Chin Wanyue nearly fainted. Nearly? Then that girl is made of, like, stone. That girl is a rock. Because I would have fucking passed out. I would have, I would have passed out while I was running away, shrieking in the opposite direction. Sister or not like mm -mm. luckily she was smart enough to not faint for real see i'm not that smart i would have no control i'd be on the ground wails and screams filled the forest as they threw themselves behind loping to hide at the sight of the horrible state of her sister's body tom tom son who sorry i backtracked otherwise in all this chaos who would bother to help her escape nuyuan chan was an amphibious creature after sucking three people dry underwater, it was itching to climb the bank and search for new targets. Lo Binga's expression was icily severe. He snapped his fingers, igniting a burst of flames at his fingertips. Then, boosting the flames with spiritual energy, he flicked them toward the lurking demonic beast. As soon as they touched the beast's hair-like strands, the flames flared into an inferno, forcing the black mass of hair to retreat into the water with all speed, leaving it afraid to come onto the bank. Lo Binga executed this set of actions in a single smooth sequence, radiating formidable might, utterly relentless. Shen Ching Cho internally held up a sign. Ten points to Lo Binga! Lo Binga picked up the night pearl that Chin Wanyue had dropped in her panic and raised it high. Like a shining beacon, it calmed everyone's hearts. Don't stray, stay together, he shouted. Then he took out a piece of the standard equipment all the participants had been given, a rescue firework, and fired it into the sky. The rescue fireworks were given to disciples to call for help if they encountered a monster they were unable to handle. The Immortal Alliance Conference hadn't released any excessively dangerous monsters. 
okay, we have a different definition of excessively dangerous. And if a participant fired a rescue firework three times, they automatically forfeited their right to participate. Therefore, in all past conferences, no one had really used the fireworks unless they were really backed into a corner. However, at that moment, glittering bursts of fireworks rose one after another in the sky over Jouet de Gorge. This should have been a beautiful scene, but at that moment, not only did these fireworks not seem gorgeous, they made the onlookers' insides twist in fear. Uh, who? You swallow the tea before you speak. Every blossoming firework represented a disciple who had encountered an exceedingly dreadful monster, whose life was in danger. The crystal mirrors! Look at the crystal mirrors! Blood-curdling shrieks and wails of distress came in an unending stream from the mirrors. Some disciples were already corpses on the ground. Some were struggling, soaked with blood, gazes full of terror. Why? Why here? There shouldn't be. Someone help! Shifu, save me! Shiga, save... A hoarse cry burst from one mirror, followed by the mournful shriek of a spirit eagle. The picture went out, becoming a flat, black screen. Everyone stared uncomprehending. What's going on? That hoarse cry had definitely been the cry of a demon realm bone eagle, a type of aerial demonic beast that was as fierce as it was bloodthirsty. It had no doubt torn apart the spirit eagle, shattering its crystal into dust. Beasts that swam in the water, beasts that walked on land, beasts that flew through the air, these fierce demonic entities had absolutely not been part of the conference's plan. Though Shen Qingqiu had mentally prepared for this long ago, as he watched the all-encompassing scene of chaos play out before him, his scalp went numb and his fingers chilled. He realized that he would be unable to do as he'd expected. He couldn't just pretend he was watching the climax of an ultra-realistic show. Outside Jouet de Gorge, pandemonium had broken out on the dais. Tianyi Temple's cultivators said sternly, What's happening? The demonic beasts chosen for the Immortal Alliance Conference were determined via strict rules and meticulous selection. How could something like the New Yuan Chun, which resides only in the demon realm, find its way in? Right. Okay. Yes. After the whole excessively dangerous thing, I figured, you know, something like that probably broke into the place then. True. Many Huanhua Palace disciples had already died. The old palace master shot to his feet. Open the barrier! The giant barrier over Jue de Gorge was supported by nearly a hundred monks from Chaohua Min Monastery. The Chaohua Monastery abbot immediately began to cast a long-distance voice transferal spell to tell the monks to release the barrier. You cannot, Yue Qingyuan said. The old palace master started. Sect leader Yue, what is the meaning of this? Over a hundred of Sang Chung Mountain's disciples were in Jue de Gorge, yet Yue Qingyuan refused to open the barrier to let the trapped escape. Obviously, he had an exceptional reason. I'm figuring it's to keep the big, huge beasties in at the sacrifice of everybody else, but that doesn't exactly seem like that would fit this guy's. So I'm not sure that that's it, but that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Shen Ching Cho had long since figured it out. He responded in Yue Qingyuan's place. Once you release the barrier, the disciples will be able to escape. But so will the demonic beasts trapped within, and they will scatter. There are villages only a few kilometers from here. The situation would become even more grave. Sect members and disciples at least have the ability to contend with the beasts, but the common people with no spiritual energy at all? No elder or sect leader on the platform had the words to retort, and they fell into a dead silence. At this time, no matter how great one's cultivation core formation or nascent soul stage or anything between, there was no way to reverse the course of events. If we cannot open the barrier to let them out, then, then what should we do? asked a cultivator at a loss. If they can't leave, then we must enter, said Lu Chinga. The members of Seng Chong Mountain exchanged a look in tacit agreement. Fellow cultivators, Yue Chingyuan said gravely, Someone must be behind today's incident. They hope to use these demonic beasts to wipe out the new talent of the cultivation world, eliminating its future pillars in one fell swoop. For now, we can only maintain the barrier. But are any of our fellow cultivators willing to enter the gorge with Sang Chung Mountain Sect to clear out the demonic beasts and rescue the participating disciples? To carve a path of blood into the gorge, clearing out all the demonic beasts, 
would require not only martial power, but a great deal of courage. The old palace master was the first to respond. It would dishonor Huanhua Palace to refuse. Huanhua Palace had sent the most participants to this year's conference and had invested the most as well. They were the party least able to take the loss. Once someone took the lead, others followed, volunteering one after another. Even if a scant few cowards were in the crowd, by now they had been reminded that their own precious, talented disciples were also trapped. Shen Ching Cho stepped forward, ready to stand with the group volunteering to provide assistance. When, Lo, when Liu Ching Ge also stepped forward, slight, also stepped forward slightly and used his sword sheath to block Shen Ching Cho's way. Expression unchanging, Shen Ching Cho pushed the sheath aside with two fingers. What is the meaning of this? Your poison, Lu Chinga said succinctly. That's right, Yue Ching Wen agreed. Your ailment from without a cure has yet to be resolved. Entrust the safety of Qingjing Peak's disciples to us. If Shen Ching Cho's condition suddenly acted up after he entered Zhui de Gorge and his spiritual energy stalled while he was surrounded by swarms of demonic beasts, then neither heaven nor earth would be able to help him. Shen Ching Cho shook his head. How can a master hide and relax on a dais while his disciples are in danger? If I can't even protect my own disciples, I don't deserve to be the peak lord of Qingjing Peak. Also, he was a vital character who needed to trigger a crucial plot point. If he wasn't on the scene, they couldn't keep filming, you know? <laughs> Ding dong! System notification! Making the villain more three-dimensional by crafting an honorable image. B points plus 30. Shen Ching Cho internally rolled his eyes. Are you handing me a piece of candy before you stab me? Yue Ching Yuan had failed to dissuade him, as had everyone else. Then you must be careful, he said reluctantly. If you can't manage it, you must use a voice transferal spell to call us for help. Shen Ching Cho wasn't so pessimistic about his ability to handle demonic beasts. His confidence in his own cultivation and spiritual power aside, his interest in the demonic beasts of proud immortal demon way had far surpassed his interest in all those flavors of women. We're gonna let that speak for itself. He might not have remembered where any given female protagonist liked to go stargazing with Lo Binga after being slighted, and he sometimes was unable to match names to characters, but he definitely remembered every demonic beast's attributes and weaknesses with exacting clarity. His knowledge of the plot aside, if you had to call something Shen Ching Cho's golden finger, it could only be this. In Jue de Gorge, Lo Binga had just calmed a crowd of terror-stricken junior disciples. In this sort of situation, they couldn't afford to fall into disarray. If they encountered a new demonic beast or any of them strayed off, the situation would only grow more disastrous. The night wind whipped by, carrying wails and howls from all around. It was impossible to tell if they came from human or demonic throats. The faint-hearted were already curled up and sobbing, and Chin Wan Yue's face was deathly pale. But at the sight of Lo Bing -e leaning against a tree, Zheng Yang... Cla clasped hilt up within his crossed arms, calm yet alert, protecting them against any attacks that came from the darkness. She shouldn't stop. She couldn't stop the trace of tender fondness welling up within her. If Shen Ching Cho were there, he would have grown incredibly excited, his gossip soul on fire. Girl, you've fallen in love with him. Suddenly, rustling noises came from the nearby shrubbery. Lo Binga's gaze sharpened, and he gathered spiritual energy in his palm, ready to strike. The rustling in the brush grew louder and louder, closer and closer. Everyone's hearts climbed into their throats. Perhaps they were terrified beyond belief, because not a single one let out a scream. Suddenly there was a plop, like someone had collapsed to the ground. A round object rolled out of the bushes. It was a human head! Both of the head's eyes were tightly closed, its face covered in blood, its hair disheveled like a chicken's nest. Normally, this sight would have been frightening, but at present, a harmless corpse head was much better than a man-eating demonic beast, so quite a few disciples even sighed in relief. This... Does anyone know which sect this Shishiang belonged to? Jin Wanyue asked, her voice trembling. Disciples from the various sects stepped closer to check, one after another, but all of them sighed in relief. Not one of ours. Never seen him before. Lo Binga gazed into the dark depths of the shrubbery, 
thinking. If the head was here, the body was also nearby. It would be better to go check its sect uniform. He strengthened the spiritual flow in his palm and walked into the dark. As expected, a stiff corpse lay beyond the shrubbery, wearing aqua blue cultivator robes. One of Tianyi's temp one of Tianyi Temple's newly accepted disciples, Lo Binga, saw only the hem of his robes before sighing. Newly accepted disciples like this, oh, one <laughs> emphasis syllable. Newly accepted disciples like this one only came to the Immortal Alliance Conference to gain experience. They had never imagined that they'd be drawn into such an unpredictable catastrophe and lose their lives. He looked farther up and suddenly froze in shock. There was still a perfectly good head on top of the corpse's neck. Then where had that other head come from? I said that conversationally, but that's the actual line. It just so happens to be exactly what the fuck I'm thinking. Jung Young had already left its sheath before Lo bing -a doubled back. As its white light overflowed, he yelled, Get away from the head! Oh, God! It's like that one fucking horror story! You know, where you're at home, and you hear your mother call from downstairs, and you leave your room to head to the stairs, and then you see your mom in the hall, and she's like, Shh, don't go down there! That's not me! Or some bullshit! That's what that was! Except somehow creepier! How do you make that creepier? I guess you do it by making it a fucking head. Jesus. Before he finished speaking, the head lying quietly askew on the ground suddenly opened its eyelids. I don't like her. I don't like this woman. It met the disciples' gazes with wide, glowering eyes. Then eight spindly spider legs, segmented and barbed, stretched forth from somewhere at the bottom of its neck, and it leapt up in a single bound. A spider head? A spider head. We're really going to talk about a spider head? Right? <sighs> the closest person couldn't dodge in time. And the monster jumped onto the disciple's head. No, now we're getting into, like, facehugger territory, and I can't do that. With a crazed howl, the disciple drew his sword and wildly swung it around, forcing everyone nearby to hurriedly duck away. Lobinga dared not attack carelessly in case he stabbed the disciple's head instead of the monster. The result would be too horrible to imagine. <sighs> the sensation of something so terrifying crawling back and forth on your head would be enough to frighten anyone to death. In complete despair, like I am at this point, the disciple changed the direction of his sword and swung it toward his own head. Before he could strike, those eight spindly spider legs had found their target and ferociously speared into his temples. He went instantly stiff, and like his tongue had twisted into knots, he was unable to yell a single word. The spider legs sticking into that human head bored deeper and deeper, and the disciple's whole body began to twitch unceasingly. Is he taking it over? I think he's taking it over. After only a moment, the eight legs drew back out, leaving nothing but twin rows of gory holes in his temples. Everything within his skull had been sucked clean, leaving it completely empty. No, he was just feeding. This is just, this is just MXTX answer to, um... Oh, uh, hello, that one D&D, &D, Mind Flayers. <sighs> the scene was utterly horrible. Even Lo Binga remained frozen for a while, unable to react. Having eaten its fill of brains, that human-headed spider monster crawled up and down the corpse, letting out a mournful scream like an infant's wail. Why doesn't she do full horror? Not that I really want her to at this point, but why doesn't she do full horror? Why aren't we getting like a full horror, you know, Don May, right? And the next time, although I think the next thing she's doing does involve the devil. I don't know, man. But like, why not? If she's this fucking good at creeping me the fuck out. Just then, an arrow of light made of pure spiritual energy flew through the night and pierced its still howling mouth skewering a hole clean through it. Amidst the sudden silence and everyone's dazed stares, Shen Qingcho rubbed his sore ears, slowly shook out his sleeves, and with a snap of his fan, murmured, Shut up. 
this arrival of his was truly quite low-key. Shizun! At the sight of Shin Ching Cho, Lo Bingo was far happier than shocked. After all, since the mayhem began, he'd anticipated that Shen Ching Cho would absolutely be so worried that he would personally enter the gorge to rescue him. Shen Ching Cho swiftly righted himself. He swept his gaze over the many disciples coming to surround him and asked, Is anyone injured? Other than those she may at the riverside and the Shidi who died just now, we've thus far suffered no other casualties, said Lo Binga. You've been through a lot said Chen Ching Cho. Lo Binga smiled, his eyes shining brightly. This disciple was only doing his duty. Chen Ching Cho glanced at Chen Wan Rui, whose eyes were still red. You can still smile? Smile? Don't you know that one of your wives is dead? Now that a powerful senior had appeared to rescue them, every one of the disciples acted like they'd seen their mother, stopping just short of clinging to Chen Ching Cho's thighs and wailing. There's no need to panic, nor reason to fear, Shen Jing Cho, said Shen Jing Cho. The sect leaders know the situation within the barrier, and a large number of seniors have already entered the gorge to help. Protect yourselves well. We'll be able to break out soon. His words were like a narcotic. The youths who'd been frightened out of their wits absorbed them and became at ease. Shizun, what exactly was that thing? asked Lo Binga. When it came to proud immortal demon ways, demonic beasts, he'd really asked the right person. Shen Ching Cho spoke with great familiarity, like he was listing his family treasures. It's no surprise you've never seen one. That was a ghost head spider, mean-tempered and terrifying to behold. It can mimic the sound of crying infants and uses that to lure prey. Once the prey approaches, it uses the suction pads below its head to firmly grip the top of its prey's skull. Its eight legs are incredibly sharp and can pierce right through bone, allowing it to drain the brains of living creatures. Oh my god, I never wanted to know that. As Lo Binga listened to this excruciatingly detailed explanation, he was filled with both admiration and awe. To think such an evil creature exists in this world... This disciple is truly too ignorant. Ever since Lo Binga apprenticed under Meng Mo, Shen Ching Cho had been able to provide him with less and less guidance on martial and sword techniques. This rare chance to show off as a master before his disciples secretly left Shen Ching Cho feeling an immense sense of satisfaction. It was like he'd finally found his long-lost teacher's halo. Ghost head spiders are a demonic rarity, he went on. Being unsuited to the human realm's environment, it's been many years since any sightings of them. So naturally, they don't appear in most reference guides. Next time you see, rem next time you see one, remember to directly strike its temples. The one we just saw was a male, and that's fortunate. The females are even more terrifying. They hadn't yet said much to each other when more rustling came from the leaves overhead. Don't you fucking do it. One by one, heads suspended upside down from threads of white silk descended from the trees. Shen Ching Cho's expression completely changed. Ghost head spider cries attracted large numbers of them to encircle and attack their prey. He swept his fan, releasing a powerful gust of wind and snapping dozens of silk threads. The ghost head spiders smashed into the ground and thudded like overripe fruit. Go, yelled Shen Ching Cho. Lo Binga sprang to action. While the ghost head spiders were dazed and reeling, the entire group broke out into a run. Master and disciple, one in the lead carving a path, the other bringing up the rear, together sandwiched the bloated procession. The two ends slaughtered foes until it rained blood, the air thick with the stench of carnage. Ghost head spiders were agile and possessed incredible jumping ability. See? No. That's it. I draw the line. You cannot possibly make anything more fucking terrifying than what... This woman has just created out of her own brain in high school, okay? 
You just can't. The jumping was the last straw. There is nothing. And I mean, like, like the only thing in my brain that could possibly be more terrifying than these things and the haired Sadako things, which, dear God, are the fucking alien face huggers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Jesus Christ, don't Google them. Okay? It's, they're very plain. It's right there on the tin. Face huggers is right there on the tin. You don't need to know anything past that if you're, especially if you're not into horror. But I guess if you weren't really into horror stuff like that, you probably wouldn't be reading this with me right now. But you know what I mean. Just don't. But I draw the line at jumping, okay? I know that jumping spiders exist on this planet and I do my best every single day of my life to forget that I know that. I did not need to read about it in this book. Thank you, MXTX. You are far too effective at horror. <sighs> <clears throat> where even was i she knocked me so far off my freaking course oh no i had just turned a page hadn't i yeah possessed incredible jumping ability i just turned a page i found it i'm here <sighs> but as they flew and leapt through the air the barrage of spiritual blasts fired by master and disciple punctured them like sieves. Once Lobinga knew how to deal with these beasts, it was like he had been blessed by divinity. He could practically pierce two or more in a single blow with his eyes closed. The scene overhead was a mess of blood and gore, anguished wails and monstrous howls. Even with all they accomplished, in the end, there were still too many, and they proved impossible to defend against. Just as Shen Ching Cho started to worry about when that goddamned hack of a poison would next act up, he felt his spiritual power stagnate, and his next strike came up empty. Truly, speak of the devil. Shen Ching Cho swiftly redirected the flow of his energy into a physical attack. With a flip of his hand, his fan sliced the ghost head spider lunging toward him horizontally in two. Lo Binga had been paying keen attention to Shen Ching Cho's condition. He noticed something was off and asked, Shizun? It's nothing, Shen Ching Cho rushed to say. Focus on yourself. Fortunately, under Shen Ching Cho's leadership, they'd already reached a particular area. As if the ghost head spiders had encountered an invisible barrier, they didn't dare advance and instead wailed and howled while falling back until they at last withdrew into the shrubbery and trees and vanished. Shen Ching Cho let out a sigh of relief. Delicately panting, her expression uncertain, Chin Wenwei asked, Senior Shen, why were those demonic beasts unwilling to approach this place? Have you forgotten what kind of mystical flower grows in Jue de Gorge? asked Shen Ching Cho. In truth, the one who'd forgotten was him. Forgive me for not remembering the flower's name. Lo Binga very considerately remembered for him, speaking the name right away. Thousand leaves, fresh snow, lotus. Shen Ching Cho finally realized why he had been unable to remember the name. The number of mystical flowers named something snow whatever or this and that lotus was such that they were more numerous than old memes. Like hell anyone could remember. Correct, said Shen Ching Cho. This is indeed the thousand leaves fresh snow lotus. This flower has grown within the depths of Jue de, of Jue de Gorge for thousands of years. Its spiritual chi is extraordinary and furthermore it is the natural bane of creatures from the demon realm. It emits an innate barrier that repels demonic beasts. Therefore, as long as we're within its protected zone, we won't suffer too many attacks. The natural bane of demonic creatures? Lobinga suddenly asked. He'd been listening with rapt attention the entire time. Now intense sparks seemed to ignite within his gaze, which flickered faintly with a peculiar quality. Shin Ching Cho thought it strange. Yes? Then Chu Zun? Could this spray of thousand leaves fresh snow lotus cure demonic poison? Lo Binga asked. Shen Ching Cho was horrified. That look, Lo Binga couldn't be hoping to pick the mystical flower and cure him, right? Stop, 
do not pass go. The girl you're supposed to pick the flower for, Chin Wan Wei, is right next to us, watching, and you want to deflower it in her presence, and for a big, strong man to boot. Leave your wife some dignity, all right? Honey! Sweetie sugar baby, honey. Oh my god. We should handle the crisis before us first. Shen Qingcho said quickly. But Lo Binghe wouldn't let it go. This disciple asks for Shi Zun's instruction. It cannot do what you imply, said Shen Qingcho. Has Shi Zun tried it before? Lo Binghe pushed. If we don't try, how can we know? This disciple knows that Shi Zun doesn't want him to take chances, but if we don't take this one, this disciple will never be at peace. This really isn't the time. Why must you be so filial at this critical juncture? I can't tell you that the that the only way to completely cure the po poison is to take a trip around. <laughs> I can't tell you that the only way to completely cure the poison is to take a trip to Pound Town with you, okay? Shen Qingzhou couldn't say any of this in such terms. His expression became cold. Has this master indulged you in such that you think you can willfully fool around even at times like this? To tell the truth, over these past few years, due to Shen Qingzhou's strange desire to preemptively atone, along with certain other sentiments, he'd never spoken to his disciple with even the slightest bit of harshness. So, once he did, Lo bing -a first startled. Then, as expected, he obediently shut his mouth. But his gaze remained obstinate, and he refused to sheath Jung Young, obviously unwilling to back down. Just as the two reached a deadlock, the dense overgrowth of grass and leaves rustled, and a person stepped out. Behind him came a group of battered and exhausted disciples who had no doubt endured a bloody struggle. On guard, Shen Cheng Cho looked his way. As soon as he came face to face with the newcomer, he felt like a giant hammer from the sky had smashed into his temple. In truth, this person's appearance could have been considered proper and handsome. It was just that his every word and action there was an inescapable every word and action there was an inescapable air of sleaziness. At the sight of Shen Qing Cho, he smiled and returned his sword, flowing with light. Uh, f uh, returned his sword, flowing with light, back to its sheath. So it was Shen Shishiang, he said. Meeting up with you puts my heart at ease. At ease, at ease, my ass. With you here, I can't be at ease, okay? The person in front of him was the main culprit behind this catastrophe. Shang Qinghua, a character that Shen Qingcho had mentally roasted before with he goes to Qinghua University, well, I even took Beijing University's exam. There is a footnote for that. It says, the word Shang can mean, can mean to go to in the sense of going to a university. So the name Shang Qinghua read aloud sounds like goes to Qinghua University. Qinghua or Tsinghua University and Beijing University are two top schools sometimes referred to as the MIT and Harvard of China. Ha! Was the peak lord of Anding Peak. At the same time, he had another important identity. He was a spy, a pawn planted many years ago by the demons, and he had orchestrated the disaster at the Immortal Alliance Conference. Long ago, Shang Qinghua had been only one of Anding's peaks, Anding Peak's many insignificant and nameless disciples. Then he'd been captured by the demons who had forced him to become a mole. Uh, no, he hadn't really been forced. He happily took on the important task of being a mole without even a hint of discomfort. Secretly backed by the demons, Shang Qinghua's road became smooth sailing. He swiftly rose through the ranks until he actually attained the position of Peak Lord of Anding Peak. 
However, he still wasn't satisfied. And why not? Because it was on Ding Peak. As soon as you heard the name, stable and settled, you knew it wasn't a place for the ambitious. This peak's tradition and specialty was completely in line with his name, Logistics. So, of course, the entire peak from top to bottom, including the Peak Lord, were like bricks to be moved wherever they were needed. Send some cheap laborers here today, assist with supplies there tomorrow. Mountain gates broken, get Onding Peak to fix it. Missing a carriage driver, get Onding Peak to send someone. This month's expense is over budget and you need money, get Onding Peak to file a report. Even if this kind of Peak Lord's professional competence trounced that of Lane Xiang and New Oriental, there's a footnote for New Oriental, refers to Shangdong Lane Xiang Vocational School and New Oriental Education and Technology Group Incorporated. They're well known because of their ads, so this is a derogatory reference. <laughs> Could they be called impressive? Were they imposing? Were they cool, awesome, insane, badass, or hyped? Did they have the dignity of a Peak Lord? Even a talented low-level disciple from another peak would have more to brag about. So, Shang Qinghua became a demon flunky without hesitation. He took it upon himself to help the demons conquer the human realm and committed all kinds of evil. Shen Qingzhou's stomach hurt as soon as he saw the guy. Shang Shidi, he said. As you approached, did you see a large demonic beast nearby? Shang Qinghua froze. A uh, large demonic beast? That, that There wasn't one. Shen Qingzhou's heart thumped. There wasn't? The large demonic beast in question was one of the plotline's key devices. In the original work, Lo Ping uh's demonic heritage was exposed because someone released a black moon rhinoceros python at the Immortal Alliance Conference. To protect the innocent, Lo Binga engaged it in a life-or-death struggle. The Black Moon Rhinoceros Python's destructive power and body were both enormous. Of course he couldn't defeat it. What to do if he couldn't win? Activate Seed Mode. Seed has a footnote. Reference to an ability in the series Mobile Suit Gundam Seed that allows someone to enter an enhanced state. You know, I never really got into Gundam, so I actually really appreciate that footnote. In doing so, Lo Binga exposed himself to Shen Qing Cho. Only then did Shen Qing Cho have the excuse to strike him down, eliminating one's companion for the sake of justice. And when he struck his student down, he enabled Lo Binga to level up. Thus far, Shen Qing Cho hadn't sensed the demonic chi of the Black Moon Rhinoceros Python, much less heard its signature moonward howl, described in enigmatic fashion as like that of both a python and a rhinoceros. Now, Shang Qinghua said he hadn't even seen it. Shen Qing Cho couldn't help being on his guard. Without this key plot device, surely the system couldn't ask him to suddenly strike Lo Bing up without any justification. He couldn't help but glance at the silent, unspeaking Lo Bing up. The child was still struggling with the matter of whether he should pick the flower to cure his master's poison. There was a stubborn glint in his eyes, as if he still felt a little discontent. Discontent, my ass. Come on, I'm doing this for your own good. If you're going to pick flowers, don't give them to the wrong person. Thank you. On my way here, we lost quite a few disciples from various sects, said Shang Qinghua, tone full of grief and lamentation. They were all future pillars of the cultivation world. The person who released these demonic creatures is truly poisonous and shameless, underhanded and vulgar, cruel to the point of insanity. Shen Qing Cho was speechless. Weren't you the one who released those creatures? Are you really okay with using these lines to attack yourself? Although if you don't mind, that's fine. He hadn't finished his, he hadn't finished his mental roast when, without warning, the earth began to shake. People staggered and fell, fell all over the place, terrified and confused, their questioning voices merging into one. Shen Qing Cho's pupils contracted. There was no mistaking the sensation of a magnitude 7.5 earthquake. The endless abyss had finally been opened. The so-called endless abyss was on the boundary between the human and demon realms, 
a liminal space. It was full of peril and the unknown. Twisting, tearing vortices through space, raging flames and burning magma were everywhere to be found. The disciples on the scene had fought the entire way there, and their bodies and hearts had long been completely exhausted. After that violent quake, most of them tumbled to the ground. Only Shen Ching Cho, Lo Bing e, and Shang Ching Hua managed to stay standing. Since the endless abyss had been opened, that meant something demonic would definitely appear from the other side. The three held their breaths in anticipation, silently waiting and on full alert. The figure of a man slowly emerged from the shadows. Oh shit. We have art real quick though. Art, this is wild. This is an absolutely bonkers 50 pages. Can I just say? Look at that art. That's great art. Like, who the hell is that? I don't know. We're about to find out, though. But, like, oh! That's so good. As soon as Shen... Ooh, that's way too much of my face. Hang on. Thank you. As soon as Shen Ching Cho saw that ice-cold face and aloof expression... He knew who it was. He shot a glance at Shang Qinghua, whose whole face had gone white. Shen Qing Cho wanted to laugh, but he was unable to. Why would Lo Binga's future subordinate, his magnificent right hand, and best buddy for committing evil deeds murder, and mayhem show up right here and now. Mo Bei Jun was a pure-blooded demon, a supremely orthodox demonic second gen. In the future, he would inherit his family's territory on the demonic border in the north, and after that, he would spend all his time appearing and disappearing at will, idling his life away, completely indifferent to everyone else. However, this maverick was destined to get beaten up by a Lo Bing -ha who had suddenly activated his overpowered abilities. Therefore, he would mysteriously capitulate to the protagonist to the point of letting himself be ordered about. From then on, Lo Bing -ha would have an exceptionally badass-looking errand boy and loyal sidekick. But to be clear, According to the original timeline, there are still 500 chapters before it's your turn to debut, Great Master. Who is this distinguished one? Shang Chung Hui yelled as he rushed forward. Why have you come to this place? Isn't that your real boss? Wasn't he the one who ordered you to release those dangerous creatures into Zhui de Gorge? No, no, please go right ahead and keep pretending. Mo Jun tilted his head. Half of his handsome silhouette sank into the darkness, a chilling sight. With a half-hearted flick of his finger, he flung Sheng Chunghua into the air with sudden force. Sheng Chunghua crashed into an old tree and fainted, blood spurting unceasingly from his mouth, spurting until Sheng Ching Cho couldn't help but sigh with respect. Such effort. Such dedication. Bro, you sure do a lot for your career. After paying his respects, he sighed again. He'd known it would go this way. In the end, he would still need to step in. Holding his sword before him, Shen Ching Cho spoke, neither humble nor haughty. A demon? This line was pointless bullshit. Anyone who couldn't see those murky billows of demonic chi would have had to be blind. A white figure flashed past him. Without saying a word, Lo Bing -a had moved to stand in front of his teacher. They just argued, and now they faced a f powerful enemy, yet he still played the role of a human shield without hesitation. It would have been a lie to say Shen Ching Cho was entirely unmoved. But the more moved he was, the more he felt that what he was about to do was just too cruel. Shen Ching Cho wished that his student had done nothing at all. Binga, stand down, he said. Lo Binga did not reply, and he did not leave. He calmly met eyes with Mo Bejun, entirely unaffected by his imposing aura. 
Robijun let out an eh of curiosity, like he'd found something that aroused his interest a little. What disciple ha what disciple has to shield his master? snapped Shen Ching Cho. You're a disciple of Sang Chung Mountain, asked Mo Bejun. Disciple of Sang Chung Mountain's Qingjing Peak, Lo Binga, thanks this distinguished one for his guidance, Lo Binga replied coldly, his tone sarcastic. Mo Bejun sneered. The immortal acts unlike an immortal, and the demon acts unlike a demon. Interesting. At this, Shen Ching Cho finally caught on to something. Could it be that Mo Beijun's appearance was a substitute for the Black Moon Rhinoceros Python's role in advancing the main storyline? Ooh, there's a thought. Immortal probably referred to Shang Ching Hua, who was lying off to the side and playing dead while occasionally remembering to cough up blood. Though clearly a cultivator, he tirelessly labored for the demon realm, indeed completely unlike an immortal. That was a fair accusation. As for the demon, who on the scene could this refer to other than Lo Binga? Shen Ching Cho's thoughts turned and whirled. He wasn't sure if Mo Bei Jun could really see Lo Binga's hidden bloodline with a single glance. Lo Binga saw his master's furrowed brow and feared he was angry at his own disobedience. Shizun, he won't let any of us go. It'd be better to use all our strength and fight this battle together. That's true, but it'd also be fucking useless. But Shen Ching Cho said, If you stay here, you'll lose your life in vain. Oh my god. Dying for Shizun, or dying together with Shizun, either one is something this disciple would gladly do said Lo Binga. Mo Beijun scoffed. You do battle with me. The following such foolish arrogance was left politely unspoken. Good thing you didn't say it out loud, thought Shen Ching Cho. In three years, Lo Binga will be able to single-handedly beat you until you can't get up. And won't you still become his diligent henchman? You'd really be slapping your own face. Fine said Mo Beijun. Then let me see. Before he had finished speaking, the killing intent in the air around them spiked. His steps agile and unreadable, Shen Ching Cho flashed in front of Lo Binga. With his left hand, he tossed forth Xu Ya to hold off Mo Beijun for a bit, even if it would be largely ineffective. At the same time, with his right hand, he lifted Lo Binga like an eagle would a chick and hurled him away. Once he'd sent Lo Binga outside the range of Mo Beijun's demonic chi, he turned and met palms with Mo Beijun. When their palms connected, blood churned in Shen Ching Cho's chest as if someone had punched him there. The spiritual energy in his body surged like it was boiling over. Though he had already formed a core and his cultivation wasn't low, what was a golden core against the right hand of the future demon lord, Lo Binga? But he had to go all out and try. Throwing himself into a desperate battle to the death without regard for his own life was the only way to survive this, according to Shen Ching Cho's experience from ten plus years of reading all sorts of Wuxia and Shansha novels. Temperamental Chunis, ooh, Chunis, 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 I'm not entirely sure, but it has a footnote. A shortened form of Japanese, oh, Japanese, Chunibyo, Chunibyo? or a middle school second year disease, describes people who are edgy or have delusions of grandeur, used as a loan word in the Chinese text, had a modicum of respect for hard-headed types who fought bloody battles to the end and refused to admit defeat, but they definitely didn't show any mercy to cowards and weaklings. Having been caught off guard and hurled away by Shen Ching Cho, Lo Binga doubled back, unsheathing Zheng Yang, Mo Beijun spared one hand to flick away the white sword glare he threw. Zheng Yang couldn't withstand the massive influx of demonic energy, and in an explosion of white light, it shattered into pieces on the spot. Mo Beijun held off both, both of Shen Ching Cho's hands with just one of his own, his power overwhelmingly superior. Bored, he blasted Shen Ching Cho away. Unusually inferior talent he said. 
foundation and techniques inflexible. Leave. Shenzhen Zhou said nothing. He wasn't some unmatched genius in the human realm, but his talent was still at least one in a thousand, and Sang Chung Mountain's foundation and techniques weren't inflexible. They were orthodox. Mo Beijun just still described them as he would a pile of garbage. If the original Shen Ching Cho had heard this, he would have coughed up three liters of blood and run away crying to make a voodoo doll. Lo Bing uh, didn't care that his sword was broken. When he saw Shen Ching Cho injured by this palm strike, blood dripping from between gritted teeth, Lo Bing's gaze frosted over, his aura changing in an instant. Sensing the shocking change, a cold flash of interest shot through Mo Beijun's pale blue eyes. He abruptly summoned a pure black sword of ice out of thin air. That one blade became two, two became four, four became eight, instantly dividing into an array of hundreds of ice swords, which shot at the surrounded Ch Shen Ching Cho from all directions. No normal defense technique could possibly block these ice swords. They were crystallized from the purest demonic chi. Shen Ching Cho's spiritual chi was nearly exhausted. If his power collided with Mo Beijun's, it would be like a single spark against a towering wave. The end result went without saying. Just as the sword array was about to come down like sheets of rain, Shen Ching Cho snarled within his heart. I've done my best, but he still thinks I'm low-level trash, so what can I do? How loathsome. If I have to die, couldn't it at least be in a better-looking way? After being stabbed with hundreds of with hundreds of black swords, I'm going to be a sieve. Who could bear to look? However, even long moments after, the pain of being skewered by thousands of swords did not arrive. Unless Mo Beijun had suddenly lost his mind and revoked the sword away, sword array, there was only one explanation. Only one person who could have blocked this attack that seethed with murderous intent. Shen Ching Cho steadied himself and slowly raised his head. As expected. In the air all around him, the forest of swords had shattered. They'd splintered so completely that it was like they disappeared without a trace, leaving only a night sky full of black ice crystals. Reflecting the moonlight, they fell one by one. This scene could have been described as beautiful. However, Lo Bing -a, standing in the middle of it, was the center of a blizzard that seemed to roar around him and within his gaze, he could only be described as terrifying. Shen Ching Cho collapsed next to a large tree, swallowing mouthfuls of blood. He circulated energy to heal his wounds while watching this earth-shaking showdown between two demon lords. The seal on Lo Binga's blood had yet to be removed. Mo Beijun was only testing him, but still this battle darkened the sky and earth, blotting out all light. Raging waves of demonic energy overflowed from both of them, enough to cloak the entire sky. Wasn't this, or wasn't this area within range of the, the thousand leaves fresh snow lotus? That was what that thing was called, right? Right, demonic creatures were supposed to be afraid to approach its proximity. But as soon as this inescapable smog of demonic chi touched the flower, the snow lotus that brimmed with spiritual chi wilted and rotted down to its roots. All the demonic creatures hiding in the dark crept out one by one, greedily inhaling what to them was a fragrant scent. Several ghost head spiders stealthily crawled onto a few of the Sang Chung Mountain disciples, hairy legs poised to stab into their temples. Shin Ching Cho was nearly out of spiritual energy and was unable to use spell attacks. He could only directly grab the beasts by their filthy, tangled hair and throw them aside. He aimed before he threw, making sure to toss them toward that traitor, Sheng Ching Hua. Meanwhile, Mo Bei Jun had pretty much finished testing Lo Bing Ha, and he prepared to wrap things up sending out one last blow. 
With a flick of his finger, he fired a stream of scarlet light at the center of Lobinga's forehead. Once that stream of light touched Lobinga's brow, it seeped into his skin, turning it turning into a fiery red mark. Lobinga was lost to his bloodlust. He didn't know why, only that his head ached like it was about to explode, and he nearly collapsed to his knees. His entire body roiled with a desire to inflict savage cruelty. Unable to vent it, he threw out his hand, and as if shot out of a cannon, an eruption of demonic chi descended upon Mobejun. This last strike was extremely powerful. Yet Mobejun waved it away with one hand, a bit surprised. Not bad. Ignoring whether Lo Binga was in a state to understand him, he continued, The human realm isn't where you belong. Why not return to your origins? Now Shen Qingqiu was finally 100% sure. Mo Beijun's sudden appearance was indeed a substitute for the Black Moon Rhinoceros Python, but compared to the original, Mo Beijun had done a far more thorough job. He'd, he'd actually directly removed the seal, suppressing Lo Binghe's d- demonic blood. And after completing his task... He turned right around and left. This NPC really was so straight to the point, not a moment spared, completely in line with his modus operandi in the original work. He'd show up wherever Lobinga needed him without rhyme or reason. His actions were just that forced. A total maverick, needing not a shred of logic. Speaking of forced, that could only be how Shen Qingqiu would face his next task, the last level. Having fought a harsh battle, Lo Binga was half kneeling in the midst of a ruined landscape, his eyes vacant, but it looked like his placid veneer would at any moment tear. Right now, his mind was like a dormant volcano, one that had suddenly erupted after being silent for many years, the magma in its veins starting to flow. Just thinking about this made Shen Qingqiu feel like he was burning up along with it until his bones and head began to ache and pound. The system sent a shrill notification, the likes of which he'd never heard before. Warning! The critical quest, the endless abyss and endless hatred, a sky filled with crystal frost and tears of blood, has officially begun. If it is not successfully completed, 20,000 protagonist satisfaction points will be deducted. Was it Chen Ching Cho's imagination? Or were the quest names getting more and more absurd every time, to the point that Chen Ching Cho didn't even know where to begin roasting them? And hey, when I confirmed with you a while back, wasn't it 10,000? It's been like five minutes, and now it's doubled? Swaying, Chen Ching Cho walked over to Lo Binga, who was still in a half crazed state. He unleashed a couple of palm strikes on his back, channeling some of his own remaining spiritual energy into his student's body. You think it's going to be that easy? Dream on. Not only did Lo Binga fail to regain consciousness, the demonic chi within his body rebounded Shen Ching Cho's efforts, forcing Shen Ching Cho to cough up the mouthful of blood he'd been holding back for so long. Only at this moment did Lo Binga finally recover some awareness. He slowly pulled himself out of his muddled state and managed to piece together a couple of mangled words. That familiar face also gradually came into focus. Shen Ching Cho saw Lo Binga's gaze clear a bit and let out a sigh of relief. He wiped at the blood by his mouth and asked in an even tone, You're awake? After a pause, if you're awake, let's have a thorough discussion. Lo Binga, tell me honestly, how, exactly how long have you been practicing demonic cultivation? As soon as he said this, it was as if Lobinga had been plunged from the stifling upper heavens into a bone-chilling pool. It would have been impossible for him to not return to complete consciousness. He stared at, Chen, at Shen Qingqiu's wintry face, and his heart sank straight down. In the past, Shen Qingqiu had always called him Binga. He had never been addressed by his full name. She soon, he said quietly, this disciple can explain. 
Though Lobinga was still a youth, he had always remained calm and, and unperturbed, often acting mature beyond his years. Now actual panic surfaced on his face, like he was frantic to explain but didn't know where to start. Seeing the oh-so-mighty male lead reduced to this state, Chen Ching Cho couldn't stand to watch it anymore. He burst out to cut him off. Silence! His voice had only just left his mouth, and he already felt like he hadn't properly controlled himself, that his tone had been overly harsh. He seemed to have scared Lo Bing uh. The boy stared at him blankly with pitch-black eyes, like a child who'd been slapped, muddled and confused, and indeed he obediently went silent. When did you start? Shen Ching Cho stiffly recited the line, unable to harden his heart enough to look his student in the eyes. Two years ago? Shen Ching Cho went silent and didn't speak. To answer his question so quickly and so honestly to boot, it seemed Lo Bing A really was scared witless. Unbeknownst to him, Lo Bing A automatically took this silence to mean, Is that so? You wicked disciple. You managed to hide this from me for so long. Two years, Shen Ching Cho said quietly. No wonder you were able to progress by leaps and bounds and to such an extent. You truly live up to your reputation, Lo Bing A. You are gifted with spectacular talent. In truth, these words he spoke were purely an expression of the, gr of the regrets within his heart. As the male lead, Lo Bing uh, was indeed blessed with spectacular talent. If Shen Ching Cho had to describe what he was feeling with absolute honesty, it was admiration with the tiniest bit of envy. But to Lo Bing uh's ears, his meaning was completely different. He instantly fell to his knees before Shen Ching Cho. Shen Ching Cho's soul almost left his body. If a man kneeling was worth his weight in gold, the male lead kneeling was worth your life. Letting him kneel at this critical juncture, when Lo Bing of remembered it in the future, wouldn't his hatred be compounded? Get up, Shen Ching Cho waved his sleeve at once. Hit by the gust from this wave, Lo Bing uh couldn't help but stand again and back up a few steps, even more stunned out of his senses. Had he done something wrong? Something so wrong that it couldn't be absolved? That he didn't even have the right to kneel and plead for Shizun for forgiveness? But Shizun, you said, you said before that just as people, <laughs> you said before that just as people can be good or bad, demons can be good or evil, he mumbled. That in this world, there is no one intolerable to the heavens. Well, that came back around, didn't it? I said that. It had been many years, Shen Ching Cho thought intently for a while. It seemed like he really had said that. But that had been then, when he'd been considering a far-off future. This was now, in the midst of a crisis with the blade suspended above his throat. This was a last resort, but would it be too shameless to slap his own face by doubling down? You are no simple demon, Shen Ching Cho said. The mark on your forehead is a mark of sin, the mark of the demons who fell from the heavens. These demons have murdered countless humans, and moreover, their temperaments are impossible to contain. From ancient times, they've been the cause of calamity upon calamity. Under no circumstances can they be spoken of in the same breath as other demons. I cannot wait and hope my earlier words were true while you develop a taste for slaughter and lose all control. As these words touched his ears, Lobinga's hopes shattered and the rims of his eyes reddened. His voice quivered. But you said, I said a lot of things, okay? I even once made several hundred posts in bright red front about wanting to castrate Shen Ching Cho. It wasn't the least bit funny. Shen Ching Cho, who'd always been so good at mental gymnastics, reached a new high in his number of mental roasts, madly smashing through his old records, yet he still couldn't put himself at ease, and instead he only grew more tired and worn out. He relentlessly told himself to the point of auto-brainwashing. 
The suffering and torment of Lobinga endured now was all necessary in order for him to stand above the masses in the future. Without enduring the bone-chilling cold, how could fragrant plum blossoms hope to bloom without three years training in realms below? How could a demon king over worlds loom? Shinmo in hand, he would possess everything beneath the heavens with a harem innumerable. He need not be an incel. But it was useless. It was completely useless. Nothing could lift his spirits. Chen Ching Cho raised his head and formed a sword to sword seal to summon Shu Ya, and he held it within his hand. The hand wielding the sword shook slightly, thin veins surfacing through his skin. Shizun, do you really want to kill me? Lo Bing A couldn't believe it. I don't want to kill you. Unable to look at his expression, Chen Ching Cho's gaze went right through him. Lo Bing A searched his memory, but he'd never seen Shen Ching Cho so cold and emotionless, not toward him. Even back when he'd just entered Sing Chung Mountain Sect, when Shizun had disliked him, his eyes had never been this empty, like he was looking at nothing. His gaze held not even a trace of warmth. It was exactly the way he'd looked at heinous demons whom he'd had executed with that same sword. It's only what that man said wasn't wrong, said Shen Ching Cho. The human realm is no longer a place for you. You ought to return to the place you belong. He stepped forward, and Lo Bing A stepped back. Shen Ching Cho pressed him backward until they were right on the edge of the endless abyss. If one looked into the ravine, they would see the simmering demonic chi roiling unceasingly within it, and they would hear the anguished wailing of tens of thousands of spirits. Hundreds and thousands of deformed arms reached up from the cracks toward the human realm, hungering for fresh blood and flesh. The deeper regions faded into black fog and eerie scarlet light. Will you go down yourself, or must I force you? Chen Ching Cho asked, Xu Ya pointing toward the abyss. He selfishly hoped that Lo Binga would go of his own volition. In this kind of scenario, characters who chose to jump from cliffs were always caught on something. Then Shen Ching Cho could go on believing his own lies that this scene would have a happy end. Better that than this moment being carved into Shen Ching Cho's memory from here on out, forcing him to remember night and day that he had shoved Lo Binga down with his own two hands. But Lo Binga refused to give up hope. He refused to believe that the teacher who had been so kind to him would actually hurt him. He refused to believe that all those years of companionship every day, morning to night, could lead to this conclusion. Even as Shu Ya stabbed into his chest, he clung to a last strand of hope. Shen Ching Cho hadn't meant to stab him. He really hadn't. He was only stealing himself, waving his sword around in order to scare Lo Bing A. If Lo Bing A had stepped back once more to avoid his swings, he'd have naturally fallen in. Shen Ching Cho had never predicted that Lo Bing A would simply silently stand there, taking the blade head on. It was all over. In the original work, Lo Bing A was only kicked into the abyss. Now there was this extra stab to add to his grudge. Lo Bing A lifted his hand to grip the blade, but he didn't use any of his strength and only lightly held it. If Shen Ching Cho decided to exert force, Xu Ya would continue to stab into him until it pierced straight through his chest. Lo Bing A's throat lightly bobbed. He said not a single word. The blade point clearly hadn't pierced his heart, yet Shen Ching Cho felt like he could feel that heart's pained thumps, traveling up the blade and into his hand, spreading through his entire arm until they arrived directly at his own heart. Shen Ching Cho suddenly withdrew the sword. 
With that action, Lobinger's body swayed a little, but he quickly steadied himself. Realizing that Shinchincho hadn't dealt him a killing blow, his eyes, which had dimmed faintly, shone once more, like sparks struggling within burnt ashes. The corner of his mouth also managed to twitch. Perhaps he was trying to smile. Then Shen Qingcho unleashed, uh, um, unleashed a final strike, which extinguished the last trace of light within Lo Binga's eyes. He knew he would never forget Lo Binga's expression from the moment of his fall. That's a scene break. With some art. You know, we were having fun. It was all fun and creepy games. And then somewhere along the line, this happened. Uh-huh. Sure. By the time the sect leaders and other cultivators arrived, having finished clearing out the demons within Jue de Gorge, the spatial rift caused by the endless abyss had long since closed. Other than Sheng Qinghua, who was playing dead, Shen Ching Chou had stabilized the injuries of everyone who'd passed out, but he hadn't really paid attention to his own. His robe splattered with blood, his face expressionless and stark white. He looked quite wretched. Yue Ching Yuan stepped forward to check Shen Ching Cho's pulse and condition, then frowned and asked Mu Ching Feng as the expert to examine him. The cultivators of each sect picked out their disciples from among the bodies scattered across the ground, then whisked them away for further treatment. Lo Ching Ge sensed that they were short one person, then he realized it was the person who was always flitting around Shen Ching Cho, impossible to miss. Where's that disciple of yours? he asked. Head lowered, Shen Ching Cho didn't answer. He picked up the shattered pieces of a long sword lying on the ground, which had broken into many fragments. Ching Jing Peak's disciples had hurried to the scene. The sharp eyed Ming Fan, who had who had been leading them, looked at that sword and stammered. She assumed that sword can't be. Ming Fun had yearned for the Zheng Yang sword on, Win on Wenjin Peak, and he had spent many years thinking about it. After Lo Binga had claimed it, his entire body had burned with envy, and for many nights he'd cursed while tossing and turning. He definitely couldn't mistake it. Ning Ying Ying let out a sudden loud wail. She soon don't scare me. Is that is that all laws, Zheng Yang? It can't be, right? It can't be. A wave of whispers flowed around them. Zheng Yang? They're talking about Peak Lord Shen's beloved disciple, Lo Bing, huh? A sword shares its existence with its master. If the sword is broken, then where is he? Could he have... <clears throat> Someone sighed. If this is really what happened, that's truly a great pity. In the midst of all this, Lo Binga had become the Immortal Alliance Conference's top ranker. Heaven envies talent. Heaven envies talent. There were, there were those who sighed in pity, those who were stunned, those who were sorrowful, and those who rejoiced in the misfortune of others. Ning Ying Ying burst into wailing tears on the spot. The Ming Feng hated Lo Bing -a and was always cursing at him to go die. He'd never really wanted him dead. Moreover, when he thought about how much Shi Zun had adored him and how this shitty brat had died without even leaving a corpse, Shi Zun had to be terribly sad, and Ming Feng couldn't be happy about that either. Gloom and anxiety fell over the entirety of Qing Jing Peak's de delegation. Shan Shu Peak's group of women with Chi Ching Chi as their head, were also deeply moved. Lo Ching Ge wasn't good with words. He patted Chen Ching Cho's shoulder. Your disciple is gone, but you can still accept more. 
Though he knew Lo Ching Gao was trying to comfort him, Shen Ching Cho still wanted to feebly roll his eyes at him. People who hadn't kicked their favorite disciple, who was also the male lead, into the endless abyss were all just commentating from the sidelines. Whatever. What's done is done. Ching Jing Peak's disciple Lo Bing He, said Ch Shen Ching Cho said slowly, fell to the demons and perished. That's a scene break. On page 255. That year's Immortal Alliance Conference was a greater disaster than nearly any since its inception. Over a thousand new talents from every sect had participated in the conference. Of the four great sects, the members of Jiao Hua Monastery, who'd focused on supporting the barrier spell, had luckily been spared, while Huan Hua Palace had suffered the greatest losses, to the tune of nearly a hundred participants. Siang Chung Mountain had taken the least damage, with only thirty or so injured. The newcomers with low skill and meager cultivation largely hailed from the other assorted sects and clans. This was the group that had been hit hardest and taken the most casualties. Getting your name on the Golden Scribe tablet should have been a joyous occasion, but this year many of the people listed on that tablet had perished in Jueidi Gorge. Most heartbreaking of all was the first ranked name, high at the top of the list. A member, a member of Seng Chung Mountain's Qingjing Peak and Shen Jing Cho's beloved disciple, Lo Bing -a, deceased, his sword broken. This was to say nothing of the casualties among the cultivators who had joined the fray to give aid during the incident. In this battle, each sect had suffered major losses. A red ranking chart was delivered at Qingjing Peak. Lo Bing -a was written high at the top in first place, glittering in gold. Ming Fun walked in to report, Shizun, 10,000 spirit stones were delivered. What should be done with them? 10,000 spirit stones? Shen Ching Cho stared at him blankly. Why would they suddenly send so many spirit stones up the mountain? Because you fucking bet, bruh. <sighs> Shizun, have you forgotten? Ming Fun asked carefully. At the Immortal Alliance Conference, you bet 5,000. Now Shen Ching Cho remembered. It was the best bet he had placed it was the bet he had placed on Lo Bing -a. Yue Ching Yuan had said that any losses would be his to pay, while Shen Ching Cho could keep any winnings for himself. Sure enough, Lo Bing -a had made a good showing, and in the final hour he had shot Pats the first and second ranked Gong Yi Xiao and Lu Mingyan to perch at the head of the rankings, thereby earning his master double his initial investment. At the time, Shen Ching Cho had thought that profit was profit and that he might as well receive a consolation prize, but now he was at a bit of a loss. In the past, he had always given these things to Lo Bing -a to handle, where the gift should be saved or whether it should be used to trade for something else, and if so, how to do so. He'd never had to worry about such things himself. Now Ming Fun was asking him what to do. Shen Ching Cho thought for a while, then said, Put them away for now. Ming Fun was silent. He actually wanted to ask for more instruction, like, where should I put it? But his master's face really didn't look too good, so he was afraid to press for answers. He thought, it should be fine if I put them where Lo Binga used to put things, and immediately withdrew. For many days, Ching Jing Peak's disciples walked on eggshells, doing their best to avoid the elephant in the room, afraid of touching their master's sore spot. They all thought that after a few days, things would eventually take a turn for the better. Then, after half a month had passed and Shen Ching Cho seemed to be gradually returning to normal, one day, right before mealtime, they suddenly heard Shen Ching Cho call Lo Bing -a's name a few times from the bamboo house. With a thud, 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 Ning Ying Ying burst inside, giving Shen Ching Cho a scare. What are you doing? he asked, charging in here so suddenly. It's unsightly for a lady to act so rough and undisciplined. Ning Ying Ying's eyes were red, like that of a little bunny's. She soon, you... Whatever you want to eat, I'll make it for you. Shen Ching Cho coughed. No need. Go out and play. She soon, Ning Ying Yi stamped her foot. Even if Alo is gone, you... You still have the rest of your disciples. You're so 
out of your mind with grief. We disciples, we disciples are worried to death. Shen Ching Cho would never have expected someone to use the words out of your mind to describe him. Actually, now that he'd reached the core formation stage, it didn't matter whether it didn't matter whether he ate or not. He'd just had a sudden craving and wanted to eat some snacks, and he had for a moment forgotten that he'd already thrown Lo Bing A into the endless abyss. How did that count as being out of his mind? Shen Ching Cho opened his mouth, a hundred words of protest ready to spill forth, but seeing Ning Ying Ying nearly about to cry from anxiety, he hurriedly went to comfort her instead. Only after he swore solemnly that his calls just now had been a mere slip of the tongue did she calm down. After coaxing her back outside, Shen Ching Cho let out a long sigh. He suddenly felt that this little miss, who in the original novel had always been pampered and childish, only capable of getting in trouble and being a burden, had in fact grown up quite a bit. After all, she was one of Lo Binga's harem. She was the one who was supposed to be clawing at the ground, wailing to the heavens, but instead she'd come to comfort her master. Had his instruction actually had some effect? Either way, things couldn't go on like this any longer. Clearly Shen Ching Cho was the one who'd raised that little lamb of a protagonist, so why did it seem like the protagonist had been the one looking after him? He was scaring his disciples, putting on the act of a grieving widow whose husband had just died. Hadn't it been only a couple of days since he'd last seen that child? No, <laughs> Shen Ching Cho mentally slapped himself. Who are you calling a grieving widow whose, whose husband died? That's not something you should just say. You're really getting worse by the day. A negative mindset produces nothing good. You deserve a slap. But perhaps, because Lo Binga had left, he really was a bit lonely. Especially when he thought about how five years from now, when they reunited, a relationship that had once been that of a compassionate teacher and a filial disciple, or something, would become defined by veiled murderous intent and daggers hidden with smiles. I am so fucking excited for that. Shen Ching Cho had brought the broken pieces of Zheng Yang back with him. He messily dug a hole behind Qingjing Peak's bamboo house, erected a tablet, and set up a sword mound. When others saw him lost in thought as he faced that empty tablet, they thought he was reminiscing about his beloved disciple, and they could only sigh. What a deep master and disciple bond. Fate toys with us all. Only Shen Ching Cho knew that the one he was mourning was in truth within that sword mound, buried underneath and never to return. That youth as warm as the sun. What truly broke him and caused him to weep at the heavens was that, after several days of silence, the system sent him a message truly devoid of all humanity. Congratulations! You have successfully completed the key quest. The legend begins Lobinga's fall and rebirth. Reward protagonist satisfaction points plus 10,000. Before Shen Ching Cho even had the chance to be pleased, it continued. However, due to extraordinary circumstances, a new point value has been activated. Lo Bing A's heartbreak points. Due to excessively high heartbreak level, protagonist satisfaction points have been reset to zero. Please continue to work hard. Reset to zero. Reset to zero. Reset to zero. Those three large words looped endlessly within Shen Ching Cho's mind. What the hell are these heartbreak points? Didn't I tell you not to randomly activate strange point values? Fuck off! So Lo Binga really is your darling son, even his heartbreak gets a point value of its own? Years of slaving away at the system's every command, and he was back to square one in a single night. Being a villain was true misery. Grievances enough to fill the ocean. Being so unhappy, naturally Shen Ching Cho had to go take it out on someone else, so he had Ming Fun deliver a message inviting Shen Ching Hua to the bamboo house. 
Shang Qinghua placed down the porcelain tea bowl and smiled. Shen Shishang's Qingjing Peak is truly elegant and secluded. Even this mere tea bowl is exquisite. Such sophistication truly makes Qinghua feel ashamed. Qingjing Peak and Anding Peak had always minded their respective business. Shen Qingzhou was reserved and aloof and very rarely took the initiative to invite guests, but this time he had actually sent a disciple to Anding Peak with an invitation. Sheng Qinghua was unable to discern what he wanted, but no one slaps a smiling face, so he started out with compliments. At least that couldn't be a misstep. Shen Qingzhou dismissed the disciples, closed the door, and sighed. Shidi, with these words of yours, everything I see begins to bring up old memories. Every plank, every dish in this Qingjing bamboo house was personally arranged by that disciple of mine. Sheng Qinghua said nothing but sighed along with him. <sighs> Lo Shiji was a heroic youth. Such a pity. Those demons brought such disaster upon us. They are truly hateful. The whole world mourns with us. Chen Shishiong. My condolences. If Sheng Shidi truly felt it was a pity, this tragedy would not have occurred, Shen Qingcho said faintly. At this, Sheng Qinghua stiffened. After a moment, he seamlessly smoothed things over with a smile. What does Shen Shishong mean by that? Is he rebuking our Anding Peak for inadequate administration? If so, Shidi should truly apologize. Shen Qingchou refilled his, his teacup. How is it inadequate? You clearly overexerted yourself. You even found demonic creatures like the ghost head spiders, New, Yang Chan, New Yuan Chan and bone eagles, none of which ever enter the human realm of their own volition. How could Shi Xiang rebuke you for inadequacy? Peak Lord Shen, to make such outrageous accusations, Shen Qinghua shot to his feet, his face rapidly changing colors. Shen Qingcho put his hand on Shen Qinghua's shoulder. Why is, why is Shen Shidi getting so excited? He said solemnly. Let's sit down and talk. Let me say something. Do you dare respond? Why wouldn't I? I have a clear conscience. Why would I fear a false accusation? With a sneer, Shang Qinghua brushed away his hand. Airplane shooting towards the sky? asked Shang Qingcho. In that instant, it was like a bolt of lightning from the heavens had struck Shang Qinghua on, in the head, rendering him unable to speak. After a long time, he managed to stammer out, You... How do you know my ID? In that moment, it was like Shen Qing Cho had also been burnt to a crisp by the aforementioned bolt of lightning. He'd only wanted to study Shang Qing Hua's reaction to this name to determine if he had also read Proud Immortal Demon Wei, but given his reaction, he wasn't just a reader, was he? After three long seconds, Shen Qing Cho jumped on him. It's you? How could I not know your ID? After reading your entire fucking novel. If you hadn't let something slip when Mo Bejun appeared, I really never would have known what hole you'd really crawled out of. Great master. What? <laughs> wait. Wait. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> wait! 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 I need... I, I need business days. Hang on. <laughs> fucking... Fucking hang on. Wait! No! No! Ahem. <clears throat> 
Um. What? Okay. Well, now that I feel like the story has actually started, like we were really in it now. Oh my God. With every 50 pages, with every session, it's just gotten like more and more. And then now we have finally blown the doors off the joint. That's what we've done. What do we do we even hang on hang on now I have to I have to do math do we have surely we do okay 262 um we will actually have a short uh session on Friday cuz there's like 30 pages um so breezing through on Friday will be totally fine and then maybe by then I'll be able to articulate something. Okay? Maybe. Because right now, I don't know. I don't know what you just fucking told me. I don't know what that means for the rest of the story. That throws such a wrench into how everything else is going to play out. Like, that just completely fucks everything that you could have been thinking like this changes I fucking can't I fucking cannot I just can't I can't check me in two days and then maybe I can but right now I fucking can't we ride a little bit past time today so we're running late and I have to go so I'm gonna go like smash my head into the wall and the wife isn't gonna know what the hell is wrong with me because she has no idea about this series so I have to go I have to just go exist after that so that's what I'm going to do. Maybe. I'll see you guys on Friday to finish this volume. That wasn't even the end of the volume. She's sick and twisted is what she is. She That bitch is sick and fucking twisted. High school. Okay, I can't get into it. I have to friggin' go. I will see you guys on Friday, I love you all very, very, very much. Please have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you on Friday for whatever the fuck is about to happen to me next. Okay? All right. Bye, guys.